Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Nadler, members of the committee. I'm Eliza Dushku, an actress, producer, new mother of two, and currently a graduate student in my hometown of Boston. I've worked in the entertainment industry from the time I was nine years old in numerous movies with actors such as Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio, Halle Berry, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, more recently as the lead in two network television series. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today about this important issue and will share my experience as a victim and survivor of sexual harassment in the workplace and as someone who was fired and silenced when I attempted to address it. In 2017, I was aggressively pursued by CBS to become a co-lead in a show called Bull. I was told that the role would be a six-year commitment to play a smart, strong, leading lady, a confident, high-powered lawyer meant to counterbalance the existing male lead, and that the role had been written specifically with me in mind. However, in my first week on my new job, I found myself the brunt of crude, sexualized, and lewd verbal assaults. I suffered near constant sexual harassment from my co-star. This was beyond anything I had experienced in my 30 year career. My male co-star, who was also one of the show's producers would frequently refer to me as legs. He would smell me and leeringly look me up and down. Off script in front of about hundred crew members and cast members, he once said that he would take me to his rape van and use lube and long phallic things on me and take me over his knee and spank me like a little girl. Another time he told me that his sperm were powerful swimmers. These are just a few examples. These were not lines in the script. They were incessant and demeaning and directed at me in the middle of what was supposed to be a professional workplace. Per my history, I tried to be professional and just do my job, but was relentlessly sexualized, crudely mocked and laughed at. I began dreading going to work each day and often rode home in silence on the verge of tears, feeling this confusing shame over not having been able to stick up for myself more. I feared that if I pushed back or reacted strongly, my job could be at risk or my professional reputation could be harmed. One day after I delivered a courtroom monologue that I'd spent significant time rehearsing, my co-star shouted out that he and his buddy wanted to have a threesome with me and began mock penis jousting while the camera was still rolling. Then as I walked off to my coffee break in between scenes, a random male crew member sidled up to me at the food service table and whispered, I'm with Bull. I wanna have a threesome with you too, Eliza. I was horrified and became physically nauseous. I'd just been humiliated in front of a hundred coworkers on the set by the star. And now it seemed it was open season for others to demean me sexually too. My co-star's behavior continued and increased. It was pervasive and mean and intentionally disempowering. It was awful. As vulnerable as it feels to admit, I began to borrow my husband's sweatpants and wore big Timberland boots to work to avoid more comments about my appearance. Over the years, I'd become accustomed to the usual banter that occurs on a set. This was very different, but the multi-year contract I'd agreed to was a big deal and my, and my drive to succeed was strong. I had received rave reviews from the showrunner, who's the person in charge of the show and others at CBS. I wanted to make the show work and I loved the role that had been created for me. I spoke with my manager and we decided that I would try to address the intolerable sexual harassment I was being forced to endure. I had built a professional reputation and should have been able to speak directly with my co-star as an equal. I specifically asked him to be my ally on set and tone down some of the sexualized comments directed at me, especially because he set the tone for the workplace. Admittedly, I was nervous, but I shared with him how he'd made me feel on set and asked if, he's, if he'd work with me to rectify this. He responded in feigned shock, no one is more respectful of women than me. I grew up with sisters. What I found out later was that 40 minutes after this conversation, he texted the head of CBS studios that I had a humor deficit and he didn't want me on the show. The CBS studio head replied that I was great and made the show better. I was fired the next day. The showrunner told me straight up that after the next episode, I would not be returning. He even suggested that I ask CBS and Steven Spielberg, whose company Amblin co-produced Bull, for my own show because he thought my work was so impressive. Now, I've worked as an actress since I was a child and signed countless contracts negotiated on my behalf, but never understood that there were mandatory arbitration clauses that would be used to keep what had happened to me a secret and would protect CBS and the sexual harassment perpetrator who had blatantly retaliated against me for trying to stop the harassment in my workplace. I was shocked to learn that I had signed away my rights to a public forum before taking a job. Who would ever think up such a clause? Who are these clauses meant to favor and protect? 
it suddenly became clear, not me. I began to understand how very limited my options were to try to address the prohibited sexual harassment and illegal rally retaliation I had experienced. In response to a letter from my counsel, CBS handed over hundreds of hours of tape, which included video of the actual harassment. It was captured verbatim on their tapes. No one other than my legal advisors in CBS has ever seen or will ever see those tapes. I was trapped by the binding arbitration clause I had un unknowingly signed. For the next year, I found myself pitted against one of the most powerful media corporations in the world, CBS, with its unlimited resources, which was controlled by the men who used the arbitration clause to protect themselves, their profitable show, and to silence me. To this day, whenever my career, my life's work is referenced, my accomplishments as an actor are ignored. I've been reduced to being Eliza Dushku, the actress who was paid off for allegedly being sexually harassed on a TV series. As I hope you can understand, this was not the outcome I desired nor ever expected, but because of binding arbitration, there will never be real justice for me and for countless other victims of sexual harassment and assault. Lastly, there's an irony that I fully understand. I'm getting to break that silence today. Countless others who are bound by arbitration are not so fortunate. I offer my strength and solidarity to all the other brave women who will speak today. We can help end this. Accountability and transparency aren't partisan issues. Thank you for hearing me and for considering this important legislation.